to our Pumping System Masterclass free webinar. Um, <clears throat> this will go for approximately 30 minutes to with a 10 minutes Q&A. Uh, if there's only a few uh, popping in with a question or two along the way, I'm an independent so product. Uh, What is Pumping System Masterclass? Um, I've, got a, I've got an issue. Oh, anyway. um, what separates this course from conventional irrigation pumping teaching? Well, in some ways it mimics conventional uh, teaching, but it comes from a completely different perspective, which is a, 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 a total energy life cycle, life cycle costing uh, perspective. We look at the uh, life cycle costing of all components in an irrigation system and not just the pump. Uh, it examines uh, pipeline hydraulics, uh, deg degradation and the effects on long-term operating cost and how to mitigate that cost. Let me just uh, grab a, a pointer here. That's what I want. Um, it comes with uh, software packages, uh, which we'll have a look at as we go. And uh, one of the big issues it considers limits of operation of all irrigation components. And that's something that uh, is, is terribly important when we consider uh, selecting pumping and irrigation components. And uh, it represents true sustainability uh, of irrigation pumping. Uh, the course origins, it, it is a metric course background. Uh, I developed this course myself. Uh, the, the beginnings of it were back in uh, 2010 as a result of the global financial crisis. Uh, as a consultant, I had no work. Um, and so I put my time into developing training courses. Uh, so far, this particular course has uh, had 255 participants in Australia and New Zealand. And uh, I'm and now looking to expand internationally. The US version, I completed the uh, conversion to US units in the last three months and, uh, I've, and uh, I've taken most of my references uh, to this book, uh, which is the uh, United States Department of Agriculture, NRCS, uh, Irrigation Pumping Plants. Very good uh, reference and the, the training course notes have been heavily referenced to that book. Uh, I, like I say, I've been to the US uh, eight times since uh, 19... 98 and uh, I've also been to three conferences where I've presented papers on energy efficiency first time in uh, Seattle in uh, 2017 and uh, uh, Long Beach, uh, California where I met uh, Chris uh, Wickman there and uh, then last year in Vegas. Um, what are my background? I have an associate diploma in mechanical engineering. I'm a certified irrigation agronomist, a certified irrigation auditor landscape and uh, I have a certificate for training and assessment. I'm also HACCP certified, which is a hazard analysis, analysis critical control point for recycled water. I did a lot of recycled water in Queensland a few years back. And I live in Adelaide, South Australia. Well, there's Adelaide, South Australia. It's the driest state of the driest continent in the world. Uh, we get most of our water from the River Murray, which in turn drains from the Murray-Darling catchment in the Eastern states of Australia. Uh, in, uh, in a dry year, Adelaide gets 90% of its water from the River Murray because it's, it's so dry in our state. I was fortunate enough in the very early 70s to be attached to the pumping en engineer of South Australia's Water Supply Authority. And uh, that took me on a remarkable journey of uh, testing and monitoring the energy efficiency of pumping plant and pipeline infrastructure throughout the whole state. And because it's dry, there's, there's a, a massive amount of uh, pumping infrastructure here. And uh, so it's, it's, it's uh, the knowledge from this background that are brought to the irrigation industry that makes my presentation so different from everybody else's. Over the next uh, uh, several decades, uh, I, I got out, uh, I, I left uh, the water supply company after 25 years and then got into the irrigation industry and uh, I, I, I went out doing as a consultant doing um, audits and, and, and designs. So I got to see uh, uh, the best and the worst of the industry and it was the worst of the industry that prompted me to write these training courses and uh, one of the things I found 
uh, in particular was uh, the, the irrigation industry was so focused on the pump as far as energy efficiency. So if you want to do an energy a pumping energy efficiency audit, you test the pump. And uh, in reality, if you want to do a pumping system energy efficiency audit, you test every component of the irrigation system, apply a, a head loss, measure a head loss, and, uh, and then compare with best practice. Well, they say, they say best practice, but what is best practice? Uh, often it's, uh, it, it's what the manufacturer might tell us. Um, so, you know, we have to be a bit more uh, critical of what is best practice. And that's one of the things that I look at in the training course. So if we look at, uh, you know, the components of where energy can be saved in an irrigation system, we have, uh, you know, the pump and motor efficiency over here, which is so heavily focused on in the industry. What I focus on more is, is the irrigation system itself and, and look at the total head pumped and divide it up and then look at where we can uh, optimize and save energy. Um, and, and principally it, it's, it, it's in mains and sub mains and lay flat hoses, pipe aging, pump suction valves and filters. And because we can't see them, we often refer to that as the elephant in the room. So what component uh, of when we look at energy savings? Well, if we just look at the pump and, uh, and assess the energy efficiency of a system, we could be typically only looking at less than 50% of recoverable energy losses. The rest is in the hydraulics. And, the, and this course really concentrates on the energy recovery from poor hydraulic systems. As part of the system, uh, it, it is based on a model of 200 acre feet. Uh, and uh, so we've, for example, a golf course, uh, 200 acre feet, a center pivot of 200 acre feet, and uh, there may be drip irrigation systems. And this enables uh, people who attend the class to identify with a size of irrigation system. So they can say, oh yeah, well, you know, you're talking about so many dollars uh, uh, lost here uh, for a 200 uh, acre feet uh, uh, irrigation system. Uh, mine's 400 acre feet, so I've got twice the losses, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a system of uh, comparison. The course uh, looks at energy for irrigation, looks at pipelines and op optimization, pump suctions and NPSH, pump selection, filtration, and pump station design and pump testing. And pump testing is a fairly strong one, lots of traps in pump testing. One of the significant parts of the, of the course is, is with software. And I'm going to deviate from here. This is uh, the main software pump data calculator. So I'll bring this up here. Uh, uh, this takes the, the, uh, the, the formula for calculating energy from, uh, from uh, the, the, uh, the NRCS book. Um, well, that's exactly the same that I use for metric, just a slightly different uh, conversion factor. So it's uh, a, a constant times the total dynamic head times the uh, cost of electricity times the volume divided by pump efficiency, motor efficiency and drive efficiency. And, uh, and that finishes up in an annual cost uh, from there. And, uh, and that in turn goes through an amortization process where we amortize that annual cost over, over 15, 20 or 25 years. Uh, so, uh, you know, I was doing a bit of a calculation here uh, yesterday for a, a major, a, a major a potato grower in uh, South Australia. Um, uh, and in addition to that, we look at uh, carbon emissions. Now, probably on a regular day-to-day -day basis that uh, won't come into your uh, uh, in vocabulary, but if you're looking at uh, government schemes, they will almost invariably require you to assess the carbon emissions and carbon emission savings if you're doing any design or auditing work. So this takes uh, uh, information from uh, AVERT, um, which is a, a government website, a federal government website in the US. And they're the zones, they're the energy zones that the US are divided into. And uh, so they're represented here. Um, and so they calculate the ton of CO2 per year that uh, an irrigation system will generate. Um, it has a diesel component. So there's a diesel, if you're pumping diesel, you can calculate the energy cost for a diesel. That's quite uh, accurately done. 
um, it takes the uh, the uh, principal uh, measurement from the engine manufacturer, which will specify the brake specific fuel consumption of a diesel uh, in, in either, um, you can drop down either grams per kilowatt hour or pounds per horsepower hour. Um, you can divide both of the uh, electric and uh, uh, diesel systems. Uh, divide, you, you can have a choice of uh, acre inches, acre feet, 100 cubic feet, cubic meters, million gallons as your input for the volume pump per year. Um, it's got a breakdown of all the energy costs in cents per kilowatt hour uh, throughout the whole uh, of the United States. And that's been one of the guides that I've had to, uh, uh, to assess. Uh, okay, so we'll get back to uh, presentation. <clears throat> so using this uh, calculator, we can come up with uh, things like kilowatt hours per acre feet. Uh, and, uh, and, and we, can, we can look at how much one foot of total dynamic head cost you over 25 years. And I've divided this into California and the rest of the country. California has the, uh, the, the dubious honor of, of having the most expensive uh, energy in the country, uh, almost by twice as much as all the other states. So I've divided it up uh, in that respect. Um, and uh, that's that's a fascinating insight onto into how much it's costing you costing you to operate any one single device in your irrigation system. Pipelines, we look at a whole heap of things, some pretty introductory level stuff, and then we get into calculating friction and hydraulic optimization, measuring friction in the field. That's that's a it's an incredibly interesting. Um, uh, a, 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 activity, measuring friction and, and deriving the Hazen and Williams C factor. Uh, one of the things we do is look at a Hazen and Williams uh, uh, equation versus a Darcy Weisbach. Now Hazen and Williams uh, gives us a C factor that's often used in our irrigation industry. The Darcy Weisbach is used and, uh, and the Manning's formula similarly is used more in, in the industry and they, they refer to the condition of a pipe in terms of its internal roughness. So. So what I've done is combine the two and come up with a comparison. And so, you know, we can tell, uh, you know, a Hazen and Williams factor. So just as an example, four thousandths of an inch bore roughness inside of a three inch pipe will reduce the Hazen and Williams C value from 150 to 130. Now you can't even see four thousandths of an inch, you know, and how does that get there? It gets there from biofilm, from unchlorinated water sources, such as rivers, dams, and recycled water. And that's, that's all we pump with. Well, what about glacial rivers? There's glacial flour in glacial rivers, silt from rivers and dams, loss of zinc from galvanized pipe, iron hydroxide and salt precipitation. You've probably seen them all. Hydraulic, opt hydraulic optimization. What's, what's the, the optimum size of a pipe? As the pipe diameter goes up, the cost of laying a pipe goes up. But as you do that, the pipe friction goes down as the pipe diameter goes up and the energy costs go down. So where's the sweet spot? Well, we look at the sweet spot. We look at how to find the sweet spot. In fact, I've got an, I've got, uh, a, um, a, an app just for that. And let's just look at that app briefly. I'll pull that app up and we've got high drops here. Um, so this is, this is the apps. We have a, a series of input data, including supply and lay costs. And, uh, and, and we can input uh, data here. So uh, uh, 0.12315 uh, uh, Hazen and Williams uh, feet, pipeline length of 3000 feet, 1300 gallons a minute, and a pump efficiency of 0.75 and motor efficiency 0.93. And these are all input factors. And from that, it calculates the optimum diameter in inches uh, over various uh, time, a very pipe uh, ages. So for 25 year life, the optimum diameter for those set of inputs is 10.83 inside diameter. Um, you, if you want to have a look at how that, uh, how that works, in fact, it's it's, it refers to a, a graph in the back office where uh, each of those ages uh, is defined by a curve uh, representing uh, the, the change in, uh, in capital cost uh, versus the diameter of the pipe. And then it, then it uh, 
re references the actual cost of supply and lay. Where those curves intersect, that's the, that's the value that we use. So that's uh, high drops, we'll just um, minimize him. <coughs> uh, we look at pipeline pigging. That's a pretty important part if you get uh, in and into areas where you have silt, uh, we can uh, we can actually now I don't think you've got sound on that by the way uh, I forgot to activate the sound so, so here's another pipeline pigging exercise um, where uh, we cited an instance cited an instance of um, uh, what what was otherwise very clean water going to a to a lateral move, and uh, we decided to pig the pipeline, and that's what we got out of it. And everybody was shocked. Um, so there's all sorts of su su uh, surprises uh, when we start delving into the inside of pipelines. Center pivots, uh, you know, the, there's uh, there's there's lots of stories to be told about. Uh, how they uh, degrade in time and, and um, you know, what um, a mild form of galvanized, uh, a loss of galvanizing uh, can do to a center pivot. We cover that uh, as well. Um, so for as far as limits of operation of a, a pipeline, we need to, you know, start to define, well, if pipelines can be so variable, uh, you know, we need to take into account uh, the, the system curves when we design a pumping system. And that's just, just an example of uh, the limits of operation taken into account. We'll see that a little bit more uh, later. In NPSH, um, yeah, this is probably a bit more standard, but I've got a, an excellent uh, graphical indication uh, of how net positive suction head works. Uh, we look at uh, minimum submergence, uh, uh, suction screening and uh, screen area calculator uh, and, and lots of case studies. Uh, and, and this is uh, the, uh, the calculator for MPSH and uh, MPSH pump, MPSH calculator here. Uh, so th this is the MPSH uh, required curve for a pump and there's the feet and head, you know, uh, normal maximum is 33.9 feet. Um, so, you know, we can put some figures in. I'll just show you how this works. We got, if uh, the uh, best efficiency point is 1100 gallons a minute, the the irrigation duty is 1300. We're gonna maximum flow uh, 1425 and a Hayes and Williams Valley of 150. And that brings up a red line, which defines the uh, maximum uh, NPSH uh, available, which is 33.9 feet. Then we go through and we add a few figures like uh, we've got uh, three feet of uh, positive head. Uh, so that takes the NPSH uh, available up three feet. Um, then we've got atmospheric pressure that's 30.8. And uh, so that brings it down because we're elevated. Uh, we've got vapor pressure, one foot of vapor pressure brings it down. Uh, we got 1.5 feet of margin that brings it down even again. Then we look at the suction pipe. So we might have a hundred feet of, uh, of nine, nine inch uh, pipe. So we start to get uh, an, an inverse uh, exponential uh, graph. Then we've got fittings losses, you know, 0 0.8. Um, and uh, the last thing uh, is, is uh, velocity head correction. And this is the killer often. If we've got a five inch inlet flange. Uh, so that now defines the net positive suction head available, the red line. And where that red line crosses the blue line, that's the limit of operation. This course is about limits of operation. And this is, enables you to see graphically. So you can program this for any pump you like. And uh, it's, it's a fascinating and valuable uh, uh, piece of gear. Then we get into pump selection. We look at some uh, introductory stuff uh, and then go into uh, one of the things is um, uh, limits of duty of a pump. Uh, you know, we've got the upper and lower limits of duty defined by the hydraulics. Uh, and that goes back to what we saw in, uh, in, the, um, uh, in the pipeline section. Uh, we have pressure sustaining valves. If there's any item in an irrigation, uh, a system that, that uh, sucks energy 
uh, more than anything else, it's a pressure sustaining valve. Uh, we'll, we'll look at that. We'll look at pump guarantee limits for pumps. You know, you go back to your HI 14.6 for this. Uh, pump materials in construction. We look at corrosion. Um, then we look at electric motors and VSDs and uh, in, in terms of, of efficiency. Then we do some typical pump selections, you know, single flow, multiple flows and multiple flows and heads. And, uh, and then we've got an app, uh, uh, I'll show you in a moment, uh, all, all the curves and every, all the uh, um, demonstration uh, uh, graphics are in uh, gallons a minute, uh, US gallons a minute and feet head. Um, and uh, I'll just say, this is what we're taught in the, generally in the irrigation industry, this is what we're taught. There's a system curve for a pump and uh, here's the duty, the vertical line is the duty and where they intersect, we've got to select a pump with the best efficiency, okay? What in reality happens is that we've got multiple system curves considering our limits of operation. And when we go to select the pump, we've actually got multiple, you know, we've got a, a quite a wide band considering the, uh, the, the pump testing tolerances uh, from uh, HI 14.6. And those tolerances are the same worldwide. Every, all pump standards are the same worldwide. You know, plus or minus 9% flow, plus or minus 7% head. And when you, you know, so you, your pump selection goes from a single point to a very large area. How do you control that? This course deals with that. And uh, then we <coughs> go into the uh, pump selection, um, <coughs> pump selection, um, duty selection. So this, this is the one here. Uh, so we've, we've selected some uh, system curves, a range of system curves here for uh, a, a particular uh, center pivot selection. And, uh, and here's the pump. We've selected a pump duty with a little bit higher um, uh, head and, and we can manipulate this. So up here, we've got the pump uh, impeller diameter and um, by selecting a, a, you know, a lower pump diameter, uh, lower impeller diameter, we can um, we can uh, massage this to suit our requirements. So it might might be 11.7. I don't know. So you know, uh, so we we've got to aim for this point here. That's the ultimate worst case duty uh, of that pumping system. It's interesting to note that the pump uh, duty will require to be operate over this range in the life of it. So you know, we might consider a VSD um, and. Uh, the other thing we can do uh, in place of the RPM, we can put um, uh, the um, uh, 3,000, uh, sorry, we got uh, 17, um, 1750 uh, and uh, 1700. So because the, because the uh, affinity laws for an impeller are the same for the impeller diameter as the impeller speed, we can also substitute uh, RPM into those. Uh, figures. We can manipulate the, the, the shape of these curves, uh, you know, instead of a C value of 125, we might have a really, really worse scenario, case scenario of a C value of 100, uh, or we can change, we can lift, um, you know, the, um, uh, the, the, <coughs> the system curve to account for other factors, whatever we want. You know, it's, it's an extremely uh, versatile little bit of software. And here's the motor, the actual uh, horsepower that the pump requires down here in the green line. So that's the um, pump selection. Uh, I've, I use that so often. It's, um, it's just so powerful. Uh, then we look at pump stations, a whole heap of things like uh, power supplies, uh, solar, uh, the buildings, buoyancy, pipe work, electrical, uh, occupation, health and safety, uh, particularly ladders and documentation. And then we go into filtration and, uh, and this is not about filtration. This is the cost of filtration. Okay. The energy costs and, 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 and we look at ultimately at a uh, case study where after an audit I identified $9,000 per annum worth of electricity savings from reconfiguring how the filtration system was installed. And that amounted to $166,000 over 15 years. That was for a large almond grower. And I found out four years later that all these other farms along the River Murray had been changed uh, in, in similarly. Well, look, look at that, uh, how that was changed. <coughs> Pump testing, we get back to the, uh, the HI 14.6 
Uh, we look at pump testing formula, how to measure head, what not to do, what to do, what sort of gauges to use. Um, then we're measuring flow. Flow, you know, I always used to say the accuracy of pump testing is 90% measuring flow. If you don't get your flow right, you're wasting your time. So we look at flow meters and their accuracy, and there's some pretty ordinary flow meters out there. How to measure power. We look at the theory and then the practice, uh, and then the pump operating costs. And then we go into a pump testing um, uh, uh, app, and I'll just bring this one up briefly for you here. Um, uh, so, no, it's not that one. It's uh, um, pump testing app down here. Uh, so it's got all the input. So you, you input your uh, uh, manufacturer's curve in there, and that might be a may be a works test curve, or it may just be a catalog curve. In which case, it's subject to plus or minus seven and plus or minus nine percent. Uh, so you've got to be really careful when you go to site. You'll probably never ever replicate the the manufacturer's pump curve in a site test, and we'll work, we'll learn why. Um, okay. So that's a, a, a brief uh, expose of the software, most of the software. <clears throat> so how will this course help you? Well, for a start, the software is extremely empowering. It puts you in charge uh, and uh, for designers, uh, it, it, uh, it it enables you to design energy efficient irrigation systems and not just select energy efficient pumps. So it does the whole deal. For auditors, an essential companion for auditors. If you do any auditing of, of uh, irrigation systems, uh, these software are amazing. For what about farm managers? To evaluate, evaluate your farm energy efficiency and verify it, rectify it. Potentially save thousands of dollars in annual pumping costs and, and tens of thousands uh, uh, amortized costs. You can build on your existing qualifications. At the moment, uh, this, uh, this course is uh, presently with the Irrigation Association for an IA select uh, a ruling. Uh, and and the best, one of the best things is you can justify a position with your client. If you're going to deliver um, a, um, a, a product selection for your client, you can justify it uh, you know, what you've selected um, by bringing up this software on, on your computer and say, well, you know, if you do this and this and this is going to cost you heaps extra and that's probably what your opposition has done. Feedback, you know, the, the, the amount of feedback we've got over from this course is just uh, mind boggling. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's yours, Jim, at the top. Jim, uh, Jim attended this course back in, uh, in May, though that was the, the metric course. Uh, Excellent experience, I highly recommend it if you're involved in irrigation pumps. Um, uh, one of the things uh, most stand out is, is, is the engineers. Engineers uh, uh, have, I, th I think they have a very textbook uh, view of how pumping systems work. This course just floors them. It totally changes the way they see pumps. Um, here's another one uh, from uh, Dowden's Pumping, Mackay. They, they employ 200 people. Um, and uh, I did an in-house uh, course and the, and the staff come back the next day still talking about the course and that they reckon is, is unique. Uh, people don't talk about courses, but this one they did. So uh, there's a lot of indicators, uh, you know, out there. You know, the most, the most amazing thing is that all of those people who said this is the best thing we've ever seen are the people who've been in the industry 35 years and reckon they know it and this has knocked them off their chair. So. This course is powerful. There's no doubt about that. It has six sessions total. Each session's two to two and a half hours. Uh, we commence at this point in time, at 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. That's 8:30 in my morning, so it's a bit hard to get up. You know, start much earlier than that for me. And three days a week for two weeks. What do you get for your money? You get each for each session. You get a set of slides uh, with notes covering all the notes. Uh, you get a tutorial and the tutorial uh, demonstrates how the software works. So without the tutorial, uh, you'll, these software apps uh, are of no value to you, okay? Um, and uh, in this particular case, we've got a couple of bonus <coughs> software apps. One's called iPeat 
<clears throat> one's called Pipe Suite. So here's uh, IPEAT, it stands for Irrigation Pumping Energy Efficiency Assessment Tool. And I'm going to bring this up because this uh, IPEAT Pro, IPEAT US. Um, this particular bit of software uh, I designed um, after considering uh, dozens and dozens of field audits. <clears throat> and I put together a software that will predict the energy efficiency of your total system without even going to site. So if you just, you know, have a few things, uh, first of all, it's a, you know, what type of irrigation system is it, whether it's a center pivot, lateral move, or, or a big gun, or a knocker rotor, or a drip spray, flood, transfer, pipe and riser. And each of those types of irrigation system has a unique hydraulic footprint. And, and, and you go to any of those that are similar and they are very similar. And so I've, I've, I've been able to create uh, algorithms for each of those that predict given, given uh, the residual pressure at the end of the system, the, the uh, feet and elevation, uh, the amount of water pumped per year, the, the kilowatt hours consumed and the electricity cost. And uh, this, is, this is one particular one. Uh, this, this was the one that, um, where the really dirty water was coming out of the pigging exercise. <clears throat> um, the potential electricity savings on that uh, particular scheme was 56%. So that was more than half. So that this guy had the potential to, to more than half his electricity costs. And we did actually do that uh, on that particular scheme. Okay, so that, that's a very powerful piece of, of kit. And uh, there is, I'll, I'll uh, just minimize that. How do I get, I can take that over there. Um, I can go here, there's a, there's a video you can watch uh, when you receive this video. There's a, um, uh, and, and uh, that's one of the first videos I made going back a few years. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll just leave that one alone. That's that video is uh, is on my website. Um, and for some reason, I lost my <coughs> the web the website uh, Telemanco's website is one of the key issues that you um, that you need to reference to. It's uh, tally.biz, T-A-L-L-E dot B-I-Z. And, uh, and there's the, uh, the latest uh, uh, class uh, plans. So this particular class will commence on the 9th, 10th and 11th of September. That's next week. And uh, down here, there's a, a, a video about the pumping system masterclass worth watching. And right down the bottom, there's watch the IP video. Now it's worth watching uh, because that will put it into perspective how that actually helps you to, uh, to identify uh, energy losses in your irrigation system. Um, we're getting close to it there. Okay, so uh, the other one is pipe suite, and that's a suite of pipe uh, hydraulics calculators, an extremely helpful tool. Uh, I designed this because I've frequently gone to, gone to site and, and I needed to calculate flows or diameters or velocities. And uh, there was nothing, you know, you, when you go to site, you, you're confronted with time restraints and, and this tool was an enormous um, improvement on my ability to do uh, site audits. How much? The normal class, $500. We've got bon bonus softwares uh, worth $195 and today's price, $695 uh, USD. This, this course would normally sell for $995. It, it is oozing with, with software that will empower you uh, to way, way past your competitors. Uh, the, the cost is payable in advance. Uh, we're working through PayPal because we're international. Uh, it's the easiest and quickest way to negotiate a payment. I would uh, uh, in, uh, issue you with a with a, a PayPal uh, um, invoice and you would just just pay that invoice uh, taken from uh, either your credit card or one of your, your favorite account. Um, so to join, 
you just send me an email to r.welke at tally.biz and uh, you can note that down if you like or you probably already have uh, that in your uh, in your um, um, LinkedIn uh, text. Uh, we need to state what name and entity is paying for the course um, and, uh, and I'll send you an in invite uh, 24 hours before the course. Uh, last is this is this is what I always start my courses off with if you always do what you've always done you'll always be what you've always been and uh, 